This location looks very tropical, but it's just the woods and some rhododendrons. And I um, put my mat down on a giant hole. That's going to prove to be fun later. All right, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, swan dive forward, bend. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step back, plank pose, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, over your toes, there I go, over my toes. Exhale, come back to your push up and then to your down dog. The bottom of your exhale, step to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale. Take your uh, left leg back. We're going into a lunge. And then step back to plank, lower down. Inhale over your toes. Exhale, push up position to your downward dog. And step your other foot forward, your left foot forward, coming into your lunge. Come down to that push up Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, come back to the push up downward dog. It's a good way to build arm strength fast, is to build that extra push up. I am hating it right now. And then put your knees on the ground and your forehead on the ground. Wag your tail in puppy pose. And then take your right hand and thread it under your left elbow, coming into a twist. I'm gonna make this twist into that thing that people sometimes like. You're taking your um, right leg, right leg, and kind of stretching it above you and grabbing it with that hand. And this should be a quad stretch and it shouldn't feel like you're leaning your whole body weight on your neck. And it shouldn't necessarily feel like you're about to fall over. And if you do fall over, it's fine. Good, and then come up and take that arm that's underneath you all the way back up. And then take your right leg back and here we are in kickstand pose. You can have your foot pointing towards your other foot if you want, or you can take it back a little bit like an actual kickstand. Just move your arm around and get into your shoulder. And then pick up your right leg and exhale your knee to your nose. Inhale it up. Exhale to your nose. Inhale it up. Exhale to your nose. Inhale it up. Exhale to your nose, inhale, and come all the way up to downward dog, bringing that same leg up with you. Downward dog splits, and then put your right foot between your hands. On inhale, come on up. Let's do a high lunge for a little bit. Finding the ground. So this... <laughs> Did you enjoy that part? That's when I almost fell over. As I said, I am put my mat on a hole. That's not so smart. Open your heart in your high lunge. It's a hole. It's also, it was also like an ant hill. All the ants were super interested in me. This is a sequence for grounding. And so find the ground. We're going to do a little bit of leg work and a lot of really big leg stretching. That's first chakra, the ground. All right, take your knee down. That's your left knee and come over your right leg. Open it up that hamstring. This is uh, half Hanumanasana. This is the splits. It doesn't look like I'm doing the splits because I'm not, I can't. I'm on one knee, but that's where we're headed. Hanumanasana, full Hanumanasana is the cheerleader splits. We'll get there. Right now, we're just working on getting into the hamstring, and if you can get into the hamstring, then maybe you can find a little spot in your low back that's also releasing. That's so nice. Okay. 
Good. All right. And then straighten your back leg. Come down over that same front leg. And we're finding the exact same pose, only from a different angle. We were doing half Hanumanasana, getting into the hamstring. And now we're doing pyramid, getting into the hamstring. In both cases, the hips are facing forward. And in both cases, you're just kind of like, you know, wiggling around until you're finding it in your hamstring. You can take your arms above your head if you want to, getting into that shoulder thing. It's not necessary. Oh, look what I'm doing, side plank. Come onto your left hand and step into side plank. I enjoy some side plank. It's a strong, strong pose. It's a nice side bend and side body opener. I guess it's not really a side bend. It's mostly about muscle and balance. You can always do it on your forearm if your wrist doesn't like this. And you can always take your bottom knee to the ground if you want. Okay, what am I doing now? Oh, now I'm doing regular plank. Come to regular plank. So one cool thing that you can do in your confinement, if you're interested, is film yourself doing yoga. I've been doing this a lot, and I have been learning a lot about my practice, man. For example, that my middle back does some crazy stuff in plank pose. I'm trying to correct it here. I'm trying to roll my shoulder blades back and down the back and get some, like a less insane looking back. All right, knees come down. Forehead on the ground, wag your tail, we're back in puppy pose. This is an excitement filled video because in addition to falling over, I also at one point I'm going to sit on my phone and not know where it is. That's just a little preview of exciting things to come. Stay tuned. All right, now you're going to take your other arm. I think that's your... You're taking your left arm and threading it under your right. We're coming into that twist on the other side. If I said right and left wrong, then just, you know, do it the way that I should have said. You're twisting the other way. And you're picking your... looks like your right leg up. Maybe grabbing it with your hand. Now this thing... This is a pose that people tend to be in a hurry to get into. Because it looks cool. But, um... Don't be in a hurry. Like, this is basically a twist. You don't have to ever grab your foot. If you like the twist, stay with the twist. Yeah. All right, and then untwist out of it. Roll into that wrist a little bit, and then you're gonna take that top leg, I think that's your right leg, back, and we're finding kickstand here. So we're doing a kickstand, and later on we're gonna do a side plank, and these are very similar poses. When I put you in side plank, if you don't wanna be there, you can come to kickstand just like this. Um, and then you're getting into your shoulder a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take that leg, and that's your right leg, up into your knee. I think we're going to do it four times. Exhaling to your knee, inhaling it up. This is usually how I do it, and you don't have to. Anytime I'm contracting my abdomen, I tend to make that an exhale. But you can do the opposite if you want. Uh, and then bring your leg up and through, coming into high lunge. Yeah. Finding some good, good balance here, opening your heart. So nice. Western North Carolina, where this is filmed. It looks like I'm in a rainforest, because I am. It's a deciduous rainforest. It's um, lush, pretty lush around here. We're lucky. Good, back knee comes to the ground. Straighten your front leg and find your hamstring look for it in your hamstring and in your low back let it be interesting
we're gonna get pretty deep in the video um, and some stretching stuff so start to notice your breath and straighten your back leg lean down over your front leg noticing your breath is just a good way to stay focused particularly if you're doing yoga by yourself and you don't have like other people around to remind you to stay deep that's when you got to be all about your breath see my pyramid pose here i am i have i'm like doing a flat back instead of um like laying my body down over my front leg that's because i'm not that flexible it's all right let's do a side plank on the right side yeah opening your body here being strong like many poses, this is one of those ones that's just so torturous until your muscles stop fighting you on it and then it just feels like balance. So hang in there. At a certain point, it's just gonna feel like you are looking for a perfect place to hold yourself weightlessly. Yeah. Good, let's do some cat cows. Inhale to a cow lift, exhale cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, child's pose, yes. Put your forehead on the ground. I am putting my hands into a namaste and tucking it behind my head. You don't have to do that, but you could. Child's pose, we're just being about the ground. So you stay in child's pose, all right? Stay in child's pose. I'm getting up and figuring out where my phone is for this next part. Don't even look at me. Stay in child's pose. I'm timing the next part because we're going to do three minutes in various yin poses. It's going to be great. All right. And then come up, we're going to start in Parvita Janrasirsasana. You got your whatever foot that is tucked into the other leg that it is. Just mirror me. And come down over your leg, and we're going to stay here for three minutes. Nice. Yoga for grounding really works. It, all yoga is going to ground you. But in particular, these kind of deep, long forward bends, you're definitely going to find the ground. Going to stay here for what feels like a very long time. And you're going to adjust the pose continually, making sure that you are interested in it and also making sure that you're comfortable in it. Those are two really important things. As I've said before, and I will continue to say, if you need to lean on something, you can lean on something. You are finding the way to express this through your muscles and not your joints, and also to express it in a way that honors your body and doesn't hurt your body. I'm not there with you, so I can't see what you're doing, but I trust you. To figure it out and make it nice.
Remember the toe touching part is not important. It's not that's not what we're aiming for. And reaching your foot is only useful if it's gonna improve your stretch. Not if it's gonna stress you out. Okay, now this is such an awkward transition back. <laughs> Come on up, and we're coming into a warrior two that we're going to turn into an uh, extended side angle. And uh, why I went this way, I don't know. You could mirror me or go the other way. It seems like I really should have gone the other way. But I went this way, and what we're doing here is um, taking that long yin stretch that we did and trying to make it into like a mirror of itself in a yang form we are working here we're using the muscles kind of working this same muscles that we were just stretching for a long time it would have worked better if i was going the other way but this is fine this is fine yeah and then such a gorgeous transition come to the other side i'm just kidding that was an awful transition come down and do this pose for three minutes on this side it's so nice And it, it was awkward, but you understand what I was doing, right? Like, we were, we were soaking in this pose for three minutes. And then I was trying to get you into a place where you would express the same muscles in an in a, um, active form, which we kind of did. Breathing here. Finding the ground. Here in Western North Carolina, we are on our first day of official lockdown. It feels, to say it feels strange would be a very big understatement. It's a good time to find the ground. If you're like me and you have kind of flexible shoulders, make sure that you don't extend out from your shoulders here too much. Try and keep your shoulder bones back in the sockets so that you're not, um, you know, it's just, that's one way to make it seem like the pose is getting deeper without it actually getting deeper. This is not, this pose is not actually about your shoulders. It's about your hamstrings, your hips, your low back. Finding your breath and finding the ground. Letting go of something. Now come up and we're gonna do this weird transition again. I, I'll work on that. What I'm doing is getting you up, getting you into warrior two. And then you're gonna turn your warrior two coming into Tita Parzvakanasana. And just really energizing those same muscles that we just used. 
You went the other way last time, then go the other way this time, obviously. The bind is something that I kind of like. You might like it. It it makes the pose a little bit more emphatic. You kind of have to have really flexible shoulders to get there. Um, it's, it doesn't really change it all that much. Okay. And then I'm coming down. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. We're gonna do three minutes in Bhadrakanasana. The yin version of Bhadrakanasana is called butterfly. I like to put my hands on, I mean my feet, I mean, I like to put my head on my feet. And that is a major flexibility accomplishment for me and um, nothing to rush towards, it doesn't matter. This is a good pose where, uh, is a good pose for leaning on something if you enjoy leaning on something. Um, my legs, because you can't really see them, are in the shape of a diamond. And I'm coming into a forward bend and that's it, that's all that's happening. And as with all yin poses, your work is to observe it, just observe it. It's going to unfold and unfold and unfold in this really slow way. So here you're coming into um, everybody's favorite pose, goddess. We did a really long cobbler, and now we're doing a goddess. Same thing, just we let those muscles go, and now we're trying to re-energize them a little bit. Goddess is a deep squat, it's a hard pose. You're feeling balanced and tough. There's a fair amount of core work in this pose. You can kind of see work in the core obviously work in the legs yeah unnecessary arm balance put your hands on the ground and make that shelf make the shelf with your elbows sit on the shelf pick up your feet what and then let your body thunk down to the ground and come into upavista konasana gonna be here for three minutes in my haste to do that exciting looking arm balance. I accidentally sat on my timer and turned it off. And so we are gonna be here for longer than three minutes, settle in. At a certain point, I'll be like, what's going on? And I'll look around for my timer. I'll tell you when that's happening. 
But for now, um, just be here. Oh, and if you want to, maybe listen to me talk about arm balances here for a sec, okay? So I added that one in because it is really actually an elegant transition between uh, the two poses that we were doing, between the goddess and the um, Upavista Konasana here. But it's not necessary. It's not arm balances. Your body doesn't really want to hold all the all of its weight on your wrists, especially since most of them are a little bit awkwardly, you know, centered. Um, that one was Titi Basna, and what we did was we built that shelf underneath us, the Chaturanga Dandasana shelf that we do in all of our vinyasas, and then we sat on it, and then we picked up our legs. And it looks like it's about leg strength or arm strength, and it's not. It's all about core strength. All those, all those arm balances are about core. So if they are something that's on your bucket list, just build up your core, and then you can do any of them. Anyway, as you see, I've been shifting around a little bit. In my Upavista Konasana, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can express your arms. The important thing is to be comfortable. And I want to tell you that when I was doing this pose for 100 years, as you are currently, um, at a certain point, I realized that I had gone too far. Oh, this is the point. I was like, I, I'm on my face on the ground, but that's not feeling good on my legs. And so I came up a little bit. And then, this is how it always works. God, I wonder if life is like this too, maybe. As soon as I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be done kind of trying to battle my way through this. And I'm just going to come up and make it easier on myself. That's when the muscles release. And that's when the pose gets deeper. I don't know why I don't always remember that. If you're going too deep, if it's feeling like too much, dial back. And then you'll be able to do anything you want. Yeah, it's so interesting that way. You keep breathing. And talking all the way through your pose. It's going on forever, but I promise I'm going to take you out. You just keep relaxing into it. The good thing about a really long hand pose like this is that when you come out, you're not going to know what day or week or month or year it is. Already probably you don't know. It's so good.
And here's where I'm like, what? The, if you want to watch some slapstick. Here's me looking around for my phone. What? Where is it? Little do I know I'm sitting on it. I'm like, this is the longest three minutes of my life. Stuff for a long time and your hips and your hamstrings are coming into some place that's kind of new that's the benefit of a lot of yin don't pay any attention to me I'm f just figuring out my stuff all right and then come up what am I doing Oh yeah, upward table. Come to an upward table. Oh, this is so good. Straighten your legs. Upward plank. You don't have to straighten your legs if you don't want to. You can do upward table if that's your preference. Upward plank is a big pose. A lot of back strength, a lot of psoas stretching. It's uh, something. We're gonna hang out here for a little bit. And it's, the antidote for that ton o yin that you just did. Building some strength back into the legs. Good, and then sit down, pull your hip flesh back, and lay your body forward. We're gonna do some more yin. But this time, I'm gonna set a different timer. That's actually gonna work. This is gonna be three minutes in Paschimottanasana. Paschimottanasana is your classic forward bend. And again, it doesn't matter about that toe touching thing. And if you happen to have a strap or a, like a tie or what else would work, a belt, you could put it around your feet and just thereby extend the reach of your arms using your feet as a little lever. I like, I like to use a strap in this pose sometimes. But really what you're just looking for is an angle where you can hold the pose and feel comfortable for three minutes. Frequently, my students will tell me after yoga that they feel like they're high, like high, as in drugs, kind of high. And, um, yep, that's what we do. And now of all times, you deserve to feel high in a way that has zero side effects. And it only makes you a better person. That's yoga. That's what we do.
All right, come on up. And come down on your back, put your feet on the ground. Yeah, bridge pose is a nice antidote for that particular yin because we're activating the legs and also opening the heart. In a way, it's kind of the opposite of what we were just doing. I'm going to make it into um, a wheel. I just really am so into wheel lately, so I'm doing it every day. But you can stay in bridge if that's your preference. We're really just looking for a back bend that's activating the legs. And then come on down. And come to your Shavasana. We're going to do full three minutes in Shavasana. When I teach in the studio, I do this thing where I will walk them into the Shavasana and like talk them into it, but when I'm teaching in a studio, I don't have birds and stuff. This is, this is what you should listen to. Roll your wrists and ankles and stretch your body and roll onto your right side. Fetal position. Figuring out where your heart is in your body. Noticing it. And then come to cross legged. Take your hands to your forehead. Breathe into your sinuses. Honoring all the cells in your body. Take your hands to your heart. Breathe into your lungs dedicate my practice to you. Thank you for practicing yoga. Namaste.